I feel like the Swift X just gets better each year. Hello guys, it's Talia. The new Swift X 14 has just been announced for 2024 in Las Vegas, and since the Creator Focus laptops first released about three years ago, everything has had a major upgrade. The specs are more powerful with Intel's new Core Ultra chips and Nvidia's GeForce RTX graphics up to a 4070, and that's paired with honestly one of my favorite OLED screens with a high resolution and all of the colors. And somehow all of that is in a chassis that's lighter than before. I don't want this laptop, I need it. <laughs> Let's take a look at the design as it's probably my favorite out of Asus whole range. It's an all metal build in this gunmetal gray color with really sharp and angular edges. It looks very clean as the screen and the hinge all kind of molded together seamlessly. And even the bezels and keyboard kind of slip into the design inconspicuously. I really like the direction the Swift has taken over these years. It's progressed a lot and it feels very put together, very cohesive, and it still keeps the Swift name, measuring in at an absolutely dainty 1.55 kilos. For an editing laptop, just, just for reference, my editing laptop is a full three kilos easy, and so the cause of most of my back problems. So if this somehow <laughs> slips off the table and falls into my bag, I will not be held responsible. This laptop is using Intel's new Core Ultra chip, the Intel Core Ultra 7. That is different and it's not just the naming that's changed the chip is built to be more efficient with more e or efficiency cores our core ultra 7 i'm still getting used to that has a total of 16 cores rather powerful for a laptop so thin and light dare i say and the chip's architecture itself is based on a new tile design where the components are all sectioned off in their separate rooms or tiles on the chip. So if you're doing something simple, like watching a video, the tile that's needed will be in use and the rest, the more power hungry tiles will turn themselves off. There's something about power hungry tiles that sounds like it's Pac-Man related, <laughs> but it is not. That is literally the most layman's of terms I can think of to describe this. End goal, you can expect higher performance, but also faster graphics and a built-in AI engine called Intel's AI Boost. Smaller AI workloads get offloaded onto this separate NPU, reserving your main processor and GPU for the heavier lifting. And with more and more software coming with AI enhanced features, especially for creators, this is going to be important. And this is paired with Nvidia's RTX graphics up to a 4070, which is rather impressive to see in such a delicate frame, especially as last year's model went up to a 4050. So power-wise, that's at least 20 more. And of course, with specs like these, I'm not going to say it's a gaming laptop, but you should definitely use it for gaming. The ray tracing is going to be beautiful and the frame rates will be making the most of that 120 hertz screen. Triple A titles on an OLED, yes please. There's also Nvidia Studio Drivers pre-installed, which is going to be essential for any creative work and DLSS 3.5. That is something I usually talk about when it comes to gaming. DLSS goes on, frame rates go up because AI. Specifically, frame generation to generate more frames. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. And super resolution to enhance image quality guess that also makes sense. But now there's also a new feature called ray reconstruction. This is so cool. It majorly enhances ray tracing, recognizing lighting, shadows, and reflections as separate objects, and then adjusting them individually. So it all looks more realistic. Things that would take minutes, many minutes to do to a static image in Lightroom, it just does it instantly to a game or to a render. You win AI. 3D workloads are also made faster alongside any AI image generation in Photoshop and stable diffusion. As I told you, there was going to be a lot of AI. And when you can generate, create, and render all of the things all at once the display has to do it justice this has a crisp 2.8k resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate so it's very responsive to use and the oled really do be oleding blacks are truly black and the colors just pop it always feels like a little treat for my eyes like oh this is how i'm supposed to be seeing things it's hdr true back 500 for certified contrast and brightness and there's also an adaptive sensor that adjusts the screen's temperature and brightness depending on your surroundings cool and bright to keep you awake at the office got your back and warm and cozy for working late in the evening <laughs> oh no this is work yeah yeah i'm working there's 100% DCI-P3 coverage and industry-level accuracy from Kalman. Especially helpful if you work in film and media, and also nice to have if you don't. There's one feature that is completely new for this year. This little ah uh, button is AcerSense, where you can monitor the system temps, battery usage, and manage your apps. So there's also a whole new AI zone. This is not something I expected. You can see all of the Swift's AI-enhanced features for image editing and detailed information on how to try it out. And for video calling, there's Acer Purified Voice 2.0 for AI noise cancellation and Acer Purified View to keep you looking sharp. And something I personally appreciate is how the Swift's been catered to keep everything portable. It charges via USB-C with a very respectfully sized charger. <laughs> Alternatively, with a 65 watt hour battery, it will last a good few hours regardless and the trackpad which has been designed by the people for the people it is huge so you really don't need a mouse and this size should be the gold standard <laughs> just saying it also feels very smooth too thanks to the coating coming from ocean recycled plastics alongside your usb port and hdmi 2.1 there's also a micro sd card slot where you can check your camera footage without needing an external card reader meaning this is all you need this which i can pick up with one hand probably less than one hand 
three fingers. The Swift X14 is very exciting to me, me personally. You have huge power in a design that's light, but very solid as well. It's an all metal laptop, it is sturdy. The style is clean and understated, letting the display speak for itself with colors and contrast levels you can't really beat. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.